Hey, what's going on everybody? Verdi here with another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to talk about Child, his abilities, what artifacts you should use, what weapons you should use, what team you should use with him, and just in general, some gameplay of Child with my particular build. So, for his abilities, while he's in uh, bow form, or his regular form, he shoots uh, arrows just like, uh, just like any other bow user. If you do a charge attack, he will apply Riptide Effect, and now if you do another charged attack in bow form, he will do water damage normally, and then also he will do two or three ticks of water damage after the shot. The shots, um, the water damage that you're seeing here without me shooting, that's just because I have him at C4. Now if you go to melee mode, you will, on crit hits, apply the same Riptide Effect. And then on hit, every 1.5 seconds, you will deal AoE, AoE water damage because of the Riptide. Okay, so for his ult, uh, he has two different ults. One in range, one in melee mode. The one in rage mode applies Riptide status to every enemy. And it restores 15 en of the energy used. So you can kind of use that to set up your... To uh, kind of set up your fight. You can ult, you can switch to melee. And uh, do that. Very, uh, very nice when you do it that way. And then in his melee mode, he has uh, a different ult. This ult will do uh, damage, and then will also do a Riptide blast to enemies affected by the Riptide status effect. Now, when you're in melee mode, you'll notice here there's going to be stuff blinking uh, on top of my head here in a second, right there. If you press E again, that's technically your Warning that you need to switch from E because your cooldown is ending and for me the cooldown is 27 seconds as you saw because I have a C1 child if you don't have C1 child that cooldown will be 35 or 36 seconds So now when you're in melee mode and if you don't press E when uh, the game Notifies you to Or if you're late or whatever you're busy with the fighting your cooldown is going to go up because you didn't press the button so normally it's 27 seconds for me it's going to be 35 seconds if you let that go off and um, if you don't have c1 child that's actually going to be 45 seconds so definitely make sure that you press the e button when the game prompts you to I'm going to show you guys how you can manage the cooldown when we go ahead and do some uh, gameplay from Child. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about his weapons. Now, I don't have any legendary weapons for him. I'm using the rank 5 Rust. I think this is a very, very good option. Now, the Skyward Harp, which is a legendary weapon, it has base stack crit rate. It also gives you 20 crit damage in rank 1. And on hit, it has a chance to do 125 physical damage in an AoE, I believe. And then another really good option for weapon for him is the Veridescent Hunt, and that is the Battle Pass weapon. It has base stat crit rate, which is really, really good for Child. And on top of it, the weapon can create a Cyclone on hit that deals 40% of attacker's damage, which is just an addition to Child's already amazing AoE damage. So the top three bows, in my opinion, would be either the Skyward Harp, the Rust, or the Veridescent Hunt. And then if you cannot get your hands on either one of those three, the next two options, I believe, would be the Stringless with Elemental Mastery and increases Elemental Skill and Elemental Burst Damage by 36%. This is also the best bow for ulting alone, but I feel like the Rust is definitely overall better for DPS. And then the fifth bow, if you cannot get the Stringless, the Rust, the Skyward Harp, or the, or the Veridescent Hunt, I think the fifth you know, best option is going to be in the shop here, which is the Blacklift Warbow. Base crit damage, and then after defeating an enemy, attack is increased by 12% for 30 seconds. This is definitely going to be really nice for Child, and then you can give him a crit rate headpiece instead of crit damage, and you're going to get really good stats on him. So that's the weapons. Now, if we're going to talk about artifacts... What I have on him right now is two-piece Thunder Soother, which is not what I want. It's just what I have really good stats on. And then I do want two-piece Noblesse Oblige on him. Now, 
in my personal opinion, the two best sets for him would be two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Noblesse, because you'll get really good damage overall, and you'll get really good ult damage. Another good set that would be really good for him would be Retracing Bolide. Now, if you're going to run Retracing Bolide, you need a fourth piece while protected by a shield, get an additional 40% normal on charge attack damage, and with that, you're going to need to run Noel or Geo Traveler or Ningguang in order for you to have uptime on the shield the most that you can, so then therefore you can get the 40% normal and charge attack damage. All right, so stat wise on my child, I have uh, 1862 attack. I got a bunch of hit points. It's actually too much because I have a bunch of rolls and hit points that I don't necessarily want. And then uh, I have 37.3 uh, crit rate, 147 crit damage, and uh, hydro damage bonus 68.2. So the stats you're going for is crit rate and crit damage. I'd say probably equally important. Then uh, attack percentage, elemental mastery, which elemental mastery I don't really have a lot of. And then um, you definitely want hydro damage, but you can get that only on your cup. And then energy recharge where you can get it as well. So if we take a look at my artifacts, over here, I have a crit rate, energy recharge, attack percentage. So this is good. This hit points, I would honestly like it to be crit damage. Feather, crit rate, hit points, percentage, attack percentage. This flat hit points can be crit damage. This could be either hit points. It could stay hit points or it could be energy recharge, elemental mastery to get more damage. Attack percentage on the sands. Once again here, I could definitely use some crit rate instead of this defense percentage. Hydro damage cup. This crit damage is really nice. Instead of the flat hit points, if I could have crit rate and then rolls into crit rate instead of defense percentage, that would be perfect. And right here, I have crit damage circlet with uh, crit rate sub and attack percentage sub. Over here, an energy recharge, elemental mastery, hit points percentage, defense percentage. I mean, anything is better than these two flat stats, but this is kind of the best that I have or the most crit rate that I have on a um, circlet, which is why I'm wearing it. And then attack percentage is obviously good. So as I was saying before, ideally you would want two Gladiator, two Noblesse. If you can't get that, you could just run two Noblesse with whatever. You can run two Gladiator with whatever. Or you could just put your best gear overall on your child and uh, you will get really, really good results. If you go ahead and take a look at his talents over here, what you should level is File Legacy Raging Tide in my opinion. And then after that, level his ult. His normal attack, you're not really going to be using that much. At least, in my opinion, you shouldn't be. If you are using Child a lot in his bow form, you're probably going to be charge attacking. So, definitely level his E and then his ult first. His passives are also really cool. Master of Weaponry increases your own party member's normal attack level by one. This is nice, especially running it with uh, a second DPS while his E is on cooldown. For example, I run Klee, and since I use my normal attack a lot with Klee, this helps me out a lot, and I do more damage. Honestly, sometimes when I'm just running Klee and I don't even need a second DPS, I will run Child just as a unit to increase Klee's damage. Then we have Never Ending, that extends the Riptide duration by 8 seconds, which is really nice. And then this is why we build him with crit. When, when Titaglia is in foul legacy, Raging Tide's melee stance, or if it's crit normal and charged attacks do crit damage, they will apply the Riptide status effect on the hit enemy. So this is why we want crit rate, because we want to be doing crit damage as often as possible. All right, now let's talk about party composition. So I would 100% always run Child with a fire unit, even when you're fighting fire units like for example the whopper flowers they don't always have the fire status on them and the reason why i say that is because you you want to cause the vaporize effect with child's ult and honestly as often as you possibly can if you're fighting something like fire slimes you don't necessarily need to run a fire unit but for example a really good party combo for child would be like barbara sucrose bennett and then child the reason for that is you get 15% Hydro Damage bonus from Barbara, and you're probably running the book that also gives you Attack Percentage bonus from Barbara. Then you have Sucrose for the Swirl. You have Bennett for both Attack Damage Boost and a Heal. And then you have Child to do damage. The most free-to-play option that you can run is you can run the Wind Traveler, you can run the Young Ling, you can run Child, and then you can run Barbara. Running 
the Belight set on Child, you're going to want to run a Geo unit. So you can run Geo Traveler, you can run Ningguang, you can run Noel. Either way, you're going to want to make sure that you have a shield up as much as you can in order to maximize the effects of your Belight. Oftentimes, what I personally run with Child is I'll run Chi Chi, I'll run Klee, I'll run Child, and I'll run Venti. Now, I'll run Chi Chi, I'll pop our E, I'll inflict enemies with Cryo, and then I will melt them down with Klee. Then I'll use a couple of charge attacks with Klee. And then while Klee's E is on cooldown, I will switch to Child and I will vaporize everything with the ult. And Venti's there to gather stuff up. I'm going to actually show you guys how that works in a minute here. But first, let's go ahead and run some uh, Abyss. Let's do uh, Spiral 10, Spiral Abyss 10. We'll go ahead and just uh, run him with like Sucrose and Barbara, for example. I'll run, uh, let's see, Sucrose, Barbara, and Child, and then second half, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> So if child is your main DPS, we're just gonna like beat this floor real quick with, with just child. We'll give him some of this. Alright, so when you enter here, you probably just pop your ult. Pop your ult to gather them up. Give yourself the bonus. And then you can do the regular ult to give them the riptide. Switch to E and just And now, as you see, you already have your ult back, so you can use the more damaging ult later on. But and so, like also here too, you can heal up a little bit. Let's say, wait for the other enemies to gather up. You know, give him a little bit of this, and now you can go back to Child, and he has his E back. And um, we're taking a bunch of uh, damage because we got hit. So the fire damage over time kind of hurts. But there you have it. All right, so we'll go ahead and run this dungeon right here. This is where Crimson Witch and Lava Walker drops. I love Crimson Witch, so I farm this a lot. We're going to go in here and uh, let's go ahead and uh, do some child DPS. Now, this dungeon is kind of a pain in the butt because it doesn't give you a lot of enemies at once. It's kind of like kill one enemy and then gain time as you as you kill the enemy. I kind of like when they just bunch up a bunch of enemies for you. It's, it makes Venti more useful. But uh, it doesn't matter either way. We're going to go here, get some Hydro Damage bonus, and then we could probably kill this slime before the other one comes. Here we go. You can also wait for the slimes to, uh, you can wait for the slimes to bunch up. That's also an option. Also, there's this fireball that keeps coming here that's really annoying. So now we can switch back to Barbara. Do a little bit of damage with Klee. Even though you're not supposed to bring fire units here, it doesn't really matter. Klee does perfectly fine. All right, and then now we can go back to Child, pop his E, and finish these dudes off. As you can see, again, we have another ult. As this dude gets closer, we'll uh, pop that. Now, if you're using Bennett and Sucrose like I was recommending, your damage is actually going to be insane. You could probably get Child to 200, 300k crits. Alright. Switch back to E. Even higher in Abyss in certain instances. Um, so far, without Ben and Sucrose, I got Child to do um, 135k, I think. There we go. All right, so that dungeon wasn't necessarily too, too fast just for the way that it was designed. And because Child is not C6, we kind of have to switch over and whatever. But that's kind of what I wanted to show you is because, you know, let's say you don't have Klee or whatever. You can use Child and then let, let's say Young Ling in that dungeon 
or Lisa or, so or somebody else that you have built to do a little bit of damage while Child's E is on cooldown. Now, let's go ahead and uh, do the very decent dungeon here. This is kind of one of my favorites to run just because of how fast it is. So, um, what we do in this one is um, I'll just go in, Q with uh, Venti, throw some bombs with uh, Klee, and then uh, ult with Child. Now, I normally also use Jade Parcells. Uh, let's see, these right here gives you like 300 attack, 10% crit rate. I have 92 of them because it's just easy to make these. And they give you such a nice boost that there's really no reason not to use it if you can make a bunch of these. And I kind of farm for food. So I either run this food or I'll run the 20% crit rate for more consistent damage. Either way, we're not going to use food just so we can show what he can do without food. So yeah, we can start it up, gather them up with Venti, throw some bombs, do a charge attack, and then we can switch to uh, Child, Vaporize. We definitely want to take care of the Agent first, because he could go invisible, and that's a pain in the butt. You also want to try not to die. But here it is. A minute and 16 seconds there with me blabbing about the food and stuff so it's usually like a 35 45 second run but either way a super fast run for a level 90 domain all right last thing here let's go kill the flower i've been farming this fire flower so much the drop rate on the fragments is absolute crap whether we crit here or not it doesn't really matter we can go ahead and swirl that, and then we can uh, apply some fire. And then uh, one of these. Not a crit, but it's fine. We could pretty much uh, still probably kill this in one go. Alright, and if you don't... See, this is why I run crit rate food, because with a the crit there, it's 100% kill in one go but either way really fast kill all right let's see what we get all right and oh i got a chunk that's pretty good chunk's pretty good i'll take a chunk either way child is an amazing unit amazing dps really really fun to use there's definitely many ways to gear them i hope that i covered most of them or all of them there's also different party comps that you can use them on, so just get out there and have fun with it. If you need any help at all, message me on Discord or stop on my Twitch channel. And I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Please leave a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.